welcome back uh, to the course on uh, blockchain. Uh, so, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, take uh, two more examples, two more use cases where uh, government can uh, get benefited by the utilization of this blockchain technology. Uh, so, we will look into specifically the uh, tax taxation case uh, where blockchain can be utilized to make the uh, tax management uh, simplified and uh, we will look into that how blockchain can be utilized for uh, digital land record management. Uh, so, let us uh, start uh, with uh, the first use case the processing the uh, tax payment. Uh, so, in this case um, this uh, good and service tax GST that uh, all of you know that uh, it is a indirect tax uh, which covers various goods and services provided by different kind of service providers or vendors uh, during the production and the service stages. Uh, so, this GST is levied on uh, different uh, goods or services that uh, you are procuring and uh, GST has broadly two components the state GST and the central GST, SGST or CGST. So, this entire workflow of uh, GST collection and GST management uh, it is very complex. So, let us see that how uh, blockchain can help us uh, in this uh, particular perspective of uh, managing this entire tax uh, with the help of uh, a decentralized ledger platform. So, uh, let us again start with a use case I start with a uh, example uh, say you want to purchase a dress. Now, whenever you want to purchase a dress it has uh, multiple uh, workflows at the various stages of the production. So, initially the farmer need to produce uh, the cottons. So, once the cotton has been produced then um, uh, these cottons comes from one vendor then you require another other raw materials for producing a dress like the needles, the sewing machine, the colors uh, all these different stages. Now, the production house they produce um, the dresses and the dresses goes to some shopping center or some shopping mall uh, from where you purchased a dress. Now, the question comes that at different stages of this production uh, how the government will levy tax on uh, individual components. So, this GST although it uh, makes this taxation process uh, more uh, governed but uh, the entire stage is bit complicated. So, for example, what happens that whenever the farmer is uh, selling uh, uh, the cottons or farmer is selling the raw cottons, uh, they are providing certain tax to the government. Then uh, the production house which uh, converting the raw cottons to the cotton balls, uh, they are leaving certain taxes. The companies which are producing needles, they are leaving certain taxes and that way whenever the entire dress is being produced by a, uh, another company uh, which are purchasing these raw materials from different other vendors or different other companies, they are providing individual taxes to individual companies and all these things are getting added to the price of uh, your dress. Now, whenever you are purchasing the final price, uh, during that time you are also providing certain tax on uh, the uh, base cost of your dress. Uh, in GST the idea is that uh, this tax is levied at every stage of the production, but ultimately only the fi fal, uh, final consumer uh, they will provide or they will give the entire tax and the intermediate steps the tax will be refunded back to the corresponding um, uh, corresponding production house and the corresponding companies. So, for example, whenever uh, a company is producing uh, a cotton uh, it is uh, and they are using that cotton or they are selling the cotton to uh, some dress company. In that case the tax which is already levied on the cotton uh, that will get um, uh, uh, that will get uh, refunded back because the entire tax will then uh, will be levied on the uh, final customer or the final consumer who is, who is consuming the dresses. So, it is it is just like that uh, the final consumer who is consuming certain goods or certain services they will um, provide the tax not the intermediate one who are uh, providing uh, 
um, who are who are actually collecting the raw materials and uh, producing the dresses. So, uh, this entire idea in GST uh, is like this. So, the GST is levied at every step uh, in the production process. However, it is refunded to all parties uh, in the chain other than the final consumer. So, the final consumer will uh, pay the entire GST, whereas the uh, intermediate uh, production houses and the companies, uh, the intermediates at the chain, uh, they will uh, get refunded uh, of the amount of GST that they produced or they, they uh, provided whenever uh, they purchased the raw materials. Uh, then again, the entire things becomes complicated because the collected GST over a particular product uh, that is get distributed among the state government and the central government as per the uh, Indian GST rules. So, uh, whatever GST uh, that is getting collected uh, based on where the uh, production was there. So, for example, if the initial cotton was produced in uh, Andhra Pradesh, then the Andhra Pradesh government is uh, subjected to get certain tax out of it, certain money uh, out of it uh, from that uh, state component of the GST, the HGST component. Uh, on the other hand, the central they get one component of the GST, which is the uh, CGST of the central uh, component of the GST. So, that way, whatever amount, whatever tax amount that is being collected uh, from this entire GST procedure, that need to be get distributed among uh, multiple states and the central government. So, this makes the entire procedure uh, very complicated. Uh, and let us see that without the blockchain environment, how this GST payment works. So, whenever you are going to purchase certain things during that time, uh, a GST invoice that is being issued uh, to the uh, to the by the seller. So, the buyer uh, the buyer pays the bill along with the GST. Uh, so, this information about the GST that is entered by the uh, seller uh, to a GST portal that uh, this amount of GST that he was collected over say a fortnight and uh, the seller it uh, he pays this entire collected amount uh, um, to the government at the same time it happens that the seller can uh, actually working as a production house just like a dress company uh, which is purchasing multiple raw materials and whenever they are purchasing the raw materials the seller also pays uh, the certain tax the GST to the suppliers. Uh, so, that way here there is a kind of loop. So, everyone in the production house they collect a certain amount of GST and this entire amount of GST the goes to the government. Now, the task of the government is to make this huge calculation like um, which part of the GST need to be refunded back uh, to the uh, intermediaries of this uh, production chain and uh, which part would be finally collected and uh, get it distributed among the central government and uh, the state government. So, this uh, entire adjustment is uh, done by the uh, done by the uh, government employees who are connected with this uh, tax department. So, this government tax department they have to manually do this entire calculation or with the help of certain softwares. Uh, after doing the calculation, uh, they may uh, adjust the amount of GST at individual uh, production stages and the entire final amount which is being collected that gets distributed among the state government and the central government. Now, as you see that this in this entire process there are multiple parties who are being involved and as I was continuously trying to uh, convince you that this blockchain platform is uh, very useful whenever you have this kind of multiple authoritative domains or multiple uh, parties. Uh, who inherently does not have a trust relationship, but they wants to come to a common platform. Here you can see that all these individual parties, uh, they are uh, actually relying on the government that uh, whenever or whatever tax they are uh, paying uh, while purchasing the raw materials and they are collecting certain taxes from the consumer. So, uh, it is it is not like that certain kind of double spending is being happened on the same cotton it is it is it is like that uh, the same cotton when it is it is sold as a cotton during that time certain taxes has been levied and whenever it is sold just like a dress as a part of the dress another component of the tax has been levied. Uh, so, GST makes this process simplification that um, the tax would be just like a one time tax it is not like that at every production stage you have to uh, 
uh, provide certain tax which uh, claims that well with the help of GST it may happen that uh, the price of the certain goods can go down. Uh, but the complication comes here that uh, everyone need to trust to the government at least that uh, whatever adjustment that will be there at the uh, intermediate state steps of the production house, uh, intermediate steps of the production, uh, those uh, amount uh, payable that will get adjusted and that will uh, transferred back uh, to the individual uh, organization or the individual companies. So, the companies can um, uh, submit one uh, refund form, GST refund form through which they will uh, get uh, refunded after doing this uh, tax adjustment. Uh, so, the tax officers their task is to calculate all these things and then adjust it accordingly. Uh, now, in this entire process, there are multiple authorities or administrative domains who are getting connected and uh, you need to have a trust relationship that whatever additional amount you are paying. Uh, so, it is just like that uh, you are giving the tax to the government at the same time you have giving certain tax whenever you are purchasing the raw materials. Uh, it is just like that uh, if you are giving the tax to the government then um, uh, whatever tax you have. Uh, uh, used uh, or you have paid for purchasing the raw materials that will come back to you. Uh, so, this kind of trust relationship is there and based on this trust relationship the entire GST model works, but what if this trust relationship breaks. So, under this kind of scenario uh, blockchain can be a platform where you can make or you can make a simplification of this entire tax payment process where all the things will be done automatically with the help of a smart contract. So, let us see how it happens whenever you have this blockchain environment or how you can make this entire process simplified with the help of a blockchain. So, similarly the GST invoice is being issued uh, by the seller and the buyer uh, pays the bill with GST. The seller then pays it to the suppliers and all these payments they are done now uh, with the help of this smart contract platform. So, this smart contract platform. Uh, which is there in a blockchain environment the smart contract platform it automatically calculates this tax because ultimately entire thing is a mathematical calculation based on from where the goods are coming from where the raw materials are coming how that raw material is being utilized and at what level of the production process the taxes are being collected. So, this entire procedure the entire workflow can be managed with the help of this smart contract. So, this smart contract will have this set of codes and that of that set of codes will automatically get executed by, um, uh, by uh, checking that who is paying what and at what step of the production stage it is the final product is whether the person is a final consumer of the uh, uh, service or the good whether or uh, is it like um, or is it like that um, you are just um, consuming the things at the uh, and you are the end consumer who is responsible for paying the entire tax. Uh, so, this entire workflow the entire chain can be controlled with the help of a smart contract by write, writing certain set of codes. So, you can consult with a domain expert or with a uh, tax engineer who can help you to build up this entire smart contract code uh, with the uh, help of uh, different rules which are there for tax regulation. Now, this smart contract um, uh, contract it can automatically do all the adjustments. So, uh, if you have purchased certain raw materials and utilize that raw materials for uh, producing a dress, uh, then this smart contract it will find it out, it can find it out and it can accordingly do the tax calculation and the additional amount that you have paid uh, for uh, purchasing the raw materials that can automatically get adjusted on the fly and the remaining amount which is the actual taxable amount. Uh, so, this net taxable amount can be directly credited to the account of the government. So, in this entire process the process is getting simplified and the process is getting real time. So, it is just like that uh, you are you are you do not need to send everything to the government and then government will do the calculation refund it you back. Rather in the production stage itself the things are getting adjusted at every individual steps. So, that way uh, the blockchain can make this entire process very simplified and at the same time reliable. Reliable in the sense like whenever it is just like that once you have already paid the tax 
you need to wait certain amount of time to get it adjusted because the government uh, tax uh, authorities they will check the entire ledger they will uh, find out whether there is certain discrepancies are there or not and accordingly they will find out whether the refund claim that you have made whether that claim is legitimate or not and then they only they will initiate a transfer but here in the smart contract everything can be verified automatically in real time that is the first advantage the second advantage comes from the fact that it becomes very difficult to fraud anything because uh, if you want your tax to get refund so so whenever you are purchasing something from uh, say from um, uh, the raw materials the supplier say you are purchasing the uh, cotton balls and you are purchasing the needles you are purchasing the sewing machine you are purchasing the uh, say the colors uh, for coloring the dresses uh, so during that time you are paying certain tax okay so you are you assume that those suppliers they are uh, not a fraud they are correct suppliers so you have to pay the tax there now whenever you are selling the item selling the dress uh, if you are not making a correct entry to the blockchain uh, first of all you are the person uh, who may uh, have a certain kind of uh, loss uh, in terms of uh, the amount that you are provided for uh, taxation purpose. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, the interesting fact come from this point that uh, uh, that uh, this entire entry need to be there in the blockchain. So, no one will be able to tamper with these entries. Uh, so, it is just like that uh, it will also give a nice record of all the stages in the production uh, for auditing purpose. So, the auditing becomes very easy uh, in this case. Uh, so, that way the blockchain can simplify this entire process of uh, tax regulations uh, from uh, many folds. Well, uh, so the advantage uh, that we have here. So, during the payment of a good or a service, the blockchain smart contracts, they can calculate the invoice based on the tax amount that is already levied during the production process. The smart contracts, they directly transfer the tax amount to the tax authority. If it is SGST, it can transfer it to the state government. If it is CGST, it can transfer it to the central government. And the refund, if any, is directly paid to the consumer uh, customer's account. It is not like that you have to wait for a refund. And this entire audit log is there, which can be verified to check the correctness. So, the advantages that we have here, first of all, the administrative burden, burden for accounting services that is drastically reduced. Uh, so, you do not need to do anything um, uh, offline. Everything will be done online during the payment itself. Then all the transactions, they are done in real time. So, uh, as such, no return filing is required or return filing can be avoided. And the third advantage that we have that all the transactions, they are transparent and tamper proof. So, everyone can uh, validate the transactions that how these individual goods they have been have been moved from different stages of the production house. It makes the life of auditor very easy. Uh, it reduces the risk for, for fraud and frauds and mistakes uh, that may happen. And um, finally, the auditor will be very happy because they can see everything from the transaction log during the auditing time and they can verify whether uh, some frauds has been happened or not. Indeed, the smart contract platform itself will uh, help you to prevent uh, many of the frauds or mistakes that can happen uh, during this entire production process. Well, now uh, let us come to the final case study for the government perspective, where you can uh, uh, use blockchain for land maintaining land registry records. So, whenever you are having certain kind of assets in the form of a land or in the form of a house. Uh, so, this kind of registry, they have three different units or three different components. Uh, so, these three components, the first component is the object that is the special unit, the land that you have or the house that you have, the right, the right means the right which is associated with the property uh, which we call as a REM right or the right which is associated with a specific person, we call it as a personal right. So, the difference between the REM right or the personal right is something like this in case of a REM right. Uh, it is just like uh, the right which is uh, 
uh, observable or which is true for the world. Uh, and uh, you do not have any kind of personal relationship based on which you have that kind of right. We call it as a REM right. So, the term REM comes from a Roman word. Uh, whereas, in the uh, personum right or sometimes we call it as a personal right. So, the personal right comes from the fact that you have certain personal relationship with uh, a person based on which the right is being levied. So, one example of this REM right and the personal right can be in case of REM right. Say you hold a house, um, say it is just like that you have the right on that house and no one else can claim the ownership of that house, you are the sole owner for that particular house. So, that is the example of REM right that is true to the world that you are the only owner of that particular house. Whereas, a personal right can be uh, like uh, you have given your house for rent. Uh, to another person and you have the right to get the monthly rent from that person. So, it builds on your personal relationship between yourself and uh, the person to whom you are uh, giving rent uh, for your uh, house. So, uh, this uh, any kind of rent, uh, any kind of right uh, is associated can be associated with the object and the final component is the subject. So, subject is the person of the title holder. So, as an individual you are the subject who is holding certain kind of assets like a house or like a land. Now, uh, these properties they get changed from one hand to another hand like you can um, uh, sell your house or you can today you are giving uh, uh, rent to your house to one person, tomorrow you can give it to another person. So, that way this rights gets change over time and the government they maintains this entire land registry records to make a log of this uh, entire rights to validate that uh, no unauthorized claims is being made on a particular asset. So, uh, this we call as the bundle of rights. So, this bundle of rights are actually the complexities which are being associated with the ownership. Uh, it may happen that more than one are claiming the position or the control of an asset um, uh, because of certain legal record, records uh, based on certain legal records you can find out whether um, uh, this person among these two persons who are claiming the ownership of this house whether uh, this person owned the house or uh, this old man uh, old, uh, owned that house. But the problem with this land registry record is that uh, whenever you are putting this land registry record in the paper format, the land registry record can always get tampered. Now, if the land registry record gets tampered, uh, it becomes very difficult to prove that uh, who is the owner of that particular house. Or sometime it may happen that uh, multiple owners are there for a particular land, uh, which is um, uh, possibly coming, uh, coming uh, based on uh, based on uh, say, say that land was in process of uh, their uh, father and after the death of their father all the sons have got the position of that land and that way uh, these things get uh, propagated and certain time there is a dispute case with the land like uh, among these uh, multiple uh, people who are claiming the ownership of a land you need to find out that which part or which share of a land belongs to which uh, person. So, uh, making this kind of decision at the judiciary level it becomes very difficult. Um, so, uh, it, it happens that um, uh, you, you have uh, seen that uh, dispute uh, regarding this kind of land registries they goes to the court and uh, this, uh, this kind of cases that goes on year after another. Uh, Sometimes a person can file a case when he was uh, 25 years old and it takes uh, some time more than 30 years to prove that actually that person uh, owns that particular land or sometime it may happen that the person may not uh, even uh, be able to prove that that land is in his, uh, in his entire lifetime. So, this kind of disputes in land registry records we are seeing uh, in everyday newspaper uh, and uh, these are a very common case that land fraud because land is a very valuable asset that people consider. And, uh, because of this, this entire process gets complicated. So, the question comes that can we utilize blockchain uh, to solve this particular problem. So, let us see that uh, how a real estate uh, transaction happens today. Uh, 
say Mr. Holmes uh, wants to, Mrs. Holmes, she wants to sell her property, sell her house. Uh, so, so, she contacts a real estate agent and a real estate agent um, checks with the land registry office that Mrs. Holmes is the legal owner of that uh, particular property. Then uh, the agent uh, makes an announce if the agent is able to successfully check with the land registry record uh, office, the land registry office that Mrs. Holmes is the uh, owner of that particular house and she is authorized to sell her house, then uh, the agent can make an announcement that the house is for sale. And then multiple buyers may come or some dispute case may come. So, if certain dispute cases comes like if someone claims at that time that well uh, you have made the advertisement for selling this particular house, but I also have a share with this house because it was it belonged to my grandparent and the property was not uh, legally divided. So, this kind of dispute may come uh, during the announcement uh, for the selling announcement. But uh, assuming that there is no such dispute, if there is certain kind of dispute then obviously you have to go to the court to solve that dispute and you have to prove uh, your legal ownership on that particular house. Uh, sometime it becomes difficult to prove uh, whenever you do not have any kind of position record or registry record of the house in your name, rather you are uh, by heredity you have uh, owned that particular house. But assuming that there is no such dispute cases, say one buyer here Mr. Watson, uh, he wants to buy this house. Now, when Mr. Watson wants to buy this house, Mr. Watson approaches to a bank uh, for a house loan and then the bank also makes a check that whether for the house that Mr. Watson is going to buy, whether that house is actually belongs to the um, property owner who is claiming like here Mrs. Holmes, who is claiming that she is the owner of that property, whether she, that belongs to that property or not. So, that every stage different organization like um, the agent office, the bank, they can validate about the ownership of that particular house. Now, if again there is no such dispute cases, then the loan is approved to Watson and then Watson can transfer the money to the agent. So, once Watson transfer the money to the agent, then a legal contract is made uh, between the Watson uh, and uh, Holmes to transfer the ownership of that house uh, from Watson, from Holmes to Watson. And then the agent, uh, he transfers the money to Mrs. Holmes after deducting his fee. Now, in this entire process, as you understand that if there is no such dispute case, maybe the process is uh, much easier. But at any level, if there is certain kind of dispute case, the entire process becomes very complicated. And uh, it's become difficult to prove the ownership of that particular house or particular land or particular property. Now, uh, here, blockchain can make the entire thing very simple. So, let us see how. So, if you put this land registry record or at least access to the land registry record via certain blockchain, so the property owner, they can automatically check their ownership and whether they are, they are eligible to sell the property by contacting with this online blockchain blessed platform. Now, again the buyer and seller can get connected over another blockchain platform as well. Uh, where uh, it is a kind of um, business to business platform, B2B platform or business to customer B2C uh, platform. Uh, so, over, over that platform uh, you can get connected, uh, the buyer and seller can get connected. Now, the seller they can automatically check based on this uh, blockchain platform whether the buyer is actually the owner of that particular ho house or there is certain kind of dispute cases. Similarly, the bank can also check the status of the ownership uh, of that particular house over this bl blockchain platform. So, verification becomes easy with the help of smart contracts. So, once this verification is done, again you can execute the purchase over the smart contract platform itself. So, uh, over the smart contract platform, the seller uh, transferred the ownership to the buyer. So, you made a contract, uh, uh, a code through which um, this transaction will happen. So, the seller transfer the ownership to the buyer and the buyer they payments make the payments. So, the pay payments can automatically get transferred from the buyer's bank to the seller bank. Now, here uh, with, with the help of this blockchain platform, everyone in the loop like the buyer, the seller, the bank, everyone can verify the status of the contract uh, over this blockchain smart contract platform. Uh, so, 
the entire thing becomes very simplified and the advantage is that uh, you can automatically execute many of the uh, legal steps with the help of this smart contract platform uh, where the smart contract will help you to do all this validation about the ownership and the transfer of the assets from one person to another person and also it keeps a record that once the um, house transfer is being done then that information is already there in the blockchain and the blockchain being it is a tamper proof it becomes others to uh, make a change in that particular information and that history can be utilized later on for ver verification of the ownership of uh, another person for uh, transfer of the properties. Uh, now this uh, particular fundamental concept of land registry record uh, utilizing blockchain. Uh, so interestingly Andhra Pradesh government they have uh, made a partnership with Chroma Way. Chroma Way is a Sweden based startup who is working on this um, blockchain platform for land registry maintenance. Uh, so Andhra Pradesh government uh, they are interested to maintain the land registry records uh, on the uh, blockchain platform and they are working towards uh, this direction. And uh, as I have mentioned that this Chroma way uh, they are working on this uh, uh, maintaining land registry platform with the help of a blockchain. So I encourage all of you to browse their sites, their Chroma way website. Uh, there you will find out multiple interesting use cases uh, which are there in the Sweden and in many other countries and along with they have uh, their white paper on which you can uh, find out um, uh, the way uh, or the steps to which uh, Chroma way follows for uh, maintaining this uh, land registry record over a blockchain platform. So uh, this is the interesting read for this talk. So I encourage all of you to look into the white paper for Chroma way. So uh, in summary, uh, this uh, entire talk for today, it has um, uh, given you multiple use cases of uh, blockchain usage for government and uh, we have discussed that whenever there are this kind of multiple authoritative domains or multiple parties who are uh, trying to get connected over a common platform for maintaining uh, the assets that assets can be the digital identity, the land registry record, the taxable amount, uh, any type of um, assets that need to be transferred among uh, multiple service provider or multiple authoritative domains, their blockchain can play a very good role and uh, you can you can solve many of the security problem as well as management problem uh, with the help of a blockchain. So that is why people call blockchain as a disruptive technology uh, which actually solves many of the problem in life. So uh, it is like that on one hand it is providing a complete secure platform and on another hand uh, it is it is making the management of the entire system very easy. So that way um, uh, many of these aspects or many of these systems can be ported over this blockchain platform and recently Indian government has taken uh, certain initiatives uh, to uh, maintain uh, information or at least to maintain the access information with the help of a blockchain platform and the advantage that it gives you that the every information becomes transparent uh, which is the major advantage like um, say for example whenever you are putting it in a central database uh, the entire information is not available to the third parties if I want to verify certain thing I will not be able to do the verification rather I need to get certain access to that central database to get the verification but here the public can get the verification so the entire movement of the government can become transparent and we can solve all the uh, debates that are going on nowadays uh, regarding this different kind of disputes which are there uh, in the public sectors. So many of such disputes can be solved with the help of a blockchain platform and at the same time uh, you, can, you can make the information secure and tamper proof that once the information is entered in this platform uh, no one will be able to tamper with this particular information. Uh, so uh, that was uh, the broad use cases for blockchain in government. So Praveen uh, uh, has already given you certain other use cases from the industry perspective and he will also talk about few other use cases from the financial domain and uh, few other domains. Uh, hopefully that will give you a broad idea about how we can utilize the blockchain platform. 
uh, and uh, give you a nice motivation to develop your own uh, blockchain application uh, for the service of the nation. Uh, so, with this I conclude um, this particular topic where uh, we have discussed various aspects of blockchain use cases for government usage. Uh, after a few other lectures of Praveen, I will come back again uh, with certain research challenges, certain advanced topics uh, in this blockchain domain. Uh, so, thank you all for attending this course.